Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Wilson, and I am with BNB Finder, and uh, uh, I would say a longtime person in this industry that we all work in. Uh, along with me here today, we have uh, Nick Goldreyer from BNB Finder, uh, as well as Lisa Kolb and Annie Buck from Acorn Internet Services. Uh, Lisa, I've known Lisa, gosh, for close to 20 years now, and uh, she is, uh, I, I would say, a true veteran of our industry and a huge champion of our industry. I think most of you probably know who she is, uh, but she is here today to talk with all of us about using Google Analytics to sort of make your marketing decisions because it uh, you, there's so much that you can see within Google Analytics that can help sort of guide your decisions on your marketing in terms of you know what's working, what's not working, what's working really great, what's what you think might be working really great but isn't and, and all of the above. Um, and so personally, I am super excited to have Lisa here today. I, she's, she's just amazing and I love what she does for the industry and we feel very lucky to have her with us here today. So I'll kick it over to you, Lisa, thanks again. Thanks, Tim, and thanks, Nick, for um, having, having us today, and Annie is here to take questions on the chat box. If you have questions, don't hesitate to type them in, and let's go ahead and get started. When you signed up for today's webinar, you heard our little story, and I just, I just want to expand on this for just a little bit. Um, I was talking to a prospective client, and somehow we got onto Google Analytics, which is typically what we talk about when I talk to prospective clients, because that's where all your data is. And um, they had said that they had recently just uh, canceled their BNB Finder um, account, their, their whole service program with them. And I'm like, oh, really? And they said, yeah, we got no booking. And I said, oh, okay, which seems odd because in the last year or so, BNB Finder is like really like doing really well providing traffic and bookings to all of our clients, most of them. Um, and we're finding that it's, it's like, it's becoming a, a staple. And I thought that was odd that they had nothing. And I'm like, oh, okay, can you show me your Google Analytics? And she brought it up on the screen and she showed me. And indeed, she didn't have any bookings in her last click section, where was what, where she had been taught to look. And I said, okay, well, that's last click. Have you looked at the assisted conversions where everybody wanders through the path to get to the booking? Did you see if maybe BNB Finder was part of the path? And she's like, well, no, I don't know how to do that. So I showed it to her and lo and behold, there were about 13,000 plus in assisted booking sitting out there. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you need to call BNB Finder as soon as we hang up and turn that thing back on. You're throwing away you know, a good resource to drive people to make a decision. So I saw this happen and then I told it to Janice and she's like, oh my gosh, you need to teach this. So that's why we're here today. Because basically, um, you just don't know what you don't know until you know it. And those of you who are here today, when we're done, you will know it. So thank you for joining us. Um, before we get too far into this, I've asked Nick if he could post just a quick survey so I can kind of see um, where everybody is with using Google Analytics, logging in, um, looking at their analytics. So Nick, can I have you do the survey? Yeah, I just posted it. Can everyone see? Yeah, it looks like people are starting to fill that out. Perfect. Right. And then I'm going to grab a sheet of paper because I can't see the answers and you're going to tell me what they are. <laughs> oh. Well, I should be able to share it with everyone. Uh, oh, when you're done? Okay. Whenever, whenever, it ra whenever you want to wrap it up. We have 25 out of 31 who have responded so far. So we'll count to five and then we'll stop. So if you haven't voted, vote. All okay. right. So our answers are, and I can't see them. <laughs> there they are. So we've got 32% that have done it in the last week. Gold star for you guys um, for the last month. We'll give you guys a silver star. That's great. Um, six months, 8%, four months. Or uh, 12 months, 4%, and we've got a whole bunch of nevers, newbies. So when we're done with the information today, I want you to go back to your webmaster and get help with this because I'm going to give you the instructions, um, and then you're probably going to need them to give you a hand getting into your analytics. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. All right, moving on. Data. <laughs> I'm definitely a data girl. 
um, when I said it, when I talk to a new um, pro prospect and somebody's interested in our services, um, they'll say, well, what do you, should I do this or should I do that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if you should do that or not. Let's look at your data because everybody's different. I can't, I can't say yes, do that. I mean, there are a few things that it's pretty much a yes, but I need to see data before I can give, you know, definitive answers on where to spend your money. So either your data is set up in a proper manner and uh, it is helping you, thumbs up, it's working for you, or it's not set up right and you've got nothing to rely on to make a qualified decision. So everything we're doing today is about data and that's why we started with the question, have you logged into your Google Analytics account? Now, there are three- Lisa, hold on, sorry, are you, are you referencing slides right now because i'm not seeing your screen are you meaning to show your screen right now um i am meaning to show my screen but i thought my screen was on maybe oh i know maybe what it was is hang on everybody i'm not a zoom girl um i do not have an option here to show my screen did that go away when we did the survey uh it it shouldn't have um, you still don't have an option to share your screen. Hang on, I'm, I'm almost there. Your bottom. There we go. Here it is. <laughs> Thank you for stopping me. Okay, so pretty slide. Data. Either you have good data or you don't. <laughs> so we've got three pieces that all have to connect. There's three pieces that these systems have to go together. There's your website and your booking engine and Google Analytics. So there are three distinct parts that all have to go together. When they're connected properly and working, you've got good data. So the two reports we're gonna talk about today is the one, the, per, the prospective client I was talking to that she was using last click and didn't see any bookings. I'm going to teach you that one and I'm gonna teach you assisted conversion so that you can find whether it was the last place they were or if it was somewhere along the path. So you first need to put yourself in your guest shoes. What, what, what does their online journey look like? And no two of your guests are gonna have the exact same online journey. So understanding their journey through your data is, is kind of important. Now, this is not a tornado funnel, this is a path. <laughs> so, you might have a guest who is out planning to travel to your area and they happen upon your Google hotel ad, the little green bed. And they, they click in, they look at your availability, they jump back, they look at your website, they, 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 they like you, they think you're pretty cool. Then they go back out to Google and they keep looking and maybe they find a pay-per-click ad for you. And then they go, yeah, I like that, I like them. Let's go see what TripAdvisor's reviews say. So they jump over to TripAdvisor. So they're, they're moving down the path of making a decision. And then they find the MD Finder and they find your listing there and they look through that. And then um, significant other shows up, comes home from work and they sit down and go, hey, I found this really great place we can go on vacation to. You wanna take a look at it? And they say, sure, what's the name of it? And then they type the name into Google and they find you. And then they're like, oh yeah, let's go ahead and book this. This is awesome. You've done your research. I love it. Let's do it. So this whole path is your journey, the journey of your guest. And everybody's going to have a different journey. The last place they are when they come in to make the booking is the last click report. Everything else that helped them make that decision on the journey is their assisted conversion report. So I'm trying to use a graphic to give you an idea of when you look at the last click report, it's literally the last place they were when they came to your website or booking engine and booked a room. But the path counts too, because they might have never decided to stay with you if they didn't find you along the way. Okay. Any questions so far, Annie? And I'm I haven't seen any questions. Nope, come no yet. questions yet. Yeah. So please, if you guys have questions, type them in. We love questions, love to answer questions. So they're gonna put in the chat box for you. This is how you get into Google Analytics. For so the 32% of you guys, maybe 42 for those of you who haven't done this in a while, go to analytics.google.com. It's gonna ask you for your sign in and your password. Now, this may be where you get stuck. If you've never logged in, you may not know what your Google login is. And there are a variety of Google logins. 
Um, anytime we get a brand new innkeeper, maybe somebody who just bought the property, they usually have a whole bucket full. <laughs> and we have to go through and go, oh, that one goes to Google My Business, and that one goes to Alerts, and that one goes to Analytics, and we need to get all these in one bucket. So you may have a bit of a challenge trying to sign in because you have to get into the right account to see your data. So you may need to get your um, marketing company, your web company to help you with that. Now, once you've logged in, you're gonna see this screen with a whole bunch of stuff on it. And some of my innkeepers are like, oh, it's too much data, I don't know what to pick. So I'm gonna make it really simple. Don't look at the whole screen. <laughs> We're just gonna look at a piece of it. And before I get to that, I, I have a little bonus tip. You see that little blue line up at the top that says universal analytics will no longer process new data in standard properties beginning on July 1st, 2023. Start setting up now and switching over. Now here's the deal. We've told our clients not to do this. We have a blog post on this. Do not switch over because none of the booking engines are ready. Remember my little graphic? The website has to connect to the booking engine, which has to connect to the Google Analytics. If you switch over to this, you are going to cause yourself trouble and you might lose some of your data. And data is precious. So you don't want to lose data. So don't be messing with converting to GA4 until you are sure your booking engine and your webmaster are ready to go. So you got to get all three pieces working together. So that's the bonus tip for today. And we have a year plus a couple months, a month month and a half. Um, so we still have a little bit of time before that has to happen. I have talked to Think Reservations, Richard's on it, um, he can let me know, we can test it. So we're getting there. But don't just swap this when you log in, because you might see this and go, oh, I need to do that. Don't do that. Just wait until it's time and your webmaster tells you to do it. All right, so back to our somewhat confusing screen. This is the corner of the screen that I want everybody to look at. So as soon as you log in, look in the upper left-hand corner, and this is your nav bar. It's a vertical nav bar, but it's there. Then we're gonna do the last click. Remember my um, infographic? It's the last place they were before they came to the website and booked the room. This is how you get to that last click report. It's acquisition, all traffic, source medium. So if you're taking notes, you go acquisition, all traffic source medium. That's how you get to the last click. Once you're sitting on last click, you're going to want to set the date. The date is up in the upper right hand corner. And usually when I'm talking with a brand new um, prospect, I set it for a year. I go from today back 12 months, just so I can get a feel for what's going on. And it comes up with an opportunity to set the date once you've got it set. And, and if it doesn't set the first time, Google Analytics date setter is a little finicky. You might have just left a space in or something. Just do it again and then hit apply and it'll set the date for the whole year. Once you've set the date, then we have to go look for BNB Finder. Now you can do this with any of your other paid listings or any place that people are sending you business. But the quickest way to filter out what you're looking for is to find this little box here with the little magnifying glass and type in BNB Finder or whatever you're searching for. Because this, this applies to everything, not just BNB Finder. Um, so I did a search for BNB Finder and you can see I had two referrals. And I had the website referral, which is your link on BNB Finder. And I am guessing, and Tim or Nick might be able to answer this, but I'm guessing that bnbfinder.com slash referral might have been um, like a special or something with a link in it. It's a slightly different referral, but it's still from BNB Finder. I'm not exactly sure where the referral is coming from. I know that before we had BNB Finder slash website, I think it was not set. And so we did something to make it specific to the website so that it would show up. And so, yeah, every time I've gone in, I've seen it in two different places like this. And it may be because I went back a whole year. This is something from previous. Mm -hmm. and it's just gathering it up. You just want to know in that first column over there, everybody who came from whatever it is you're inspecting and you're inspecting BNB Finder. So you can see on the right-hand side that there were three transactions for $1,675. Now, what's really cool is if you want to know who those three people are, you can use the primary dimension. This gets, this gets into a much deeper GA class but you can use, just know you can do this. You can get a secondary dimension and set it up and it'll give you your transaction ID 
you can jump into your booking engine and you'll know exactly who those people were, who, who were the last click bookers from BNB Finder. It's kind of cool. Just know you can do that if you want to. So this is the last click report. Remember the infographic. They've gone down the path and they're ready to book. This is the last place they were. Okay. Now, let's look at assisted. This is the second of the two reports. So accessing the assisted conversion report, it's a different path when you go through. So instead of acquisition, all traffic source medium, now you're going to go to conversions, multi-channel funnels, and assisted conversions. And just a tiny bit of history here, <laughs> multi-channel funnel reports were not with the original um, Urchin code that Google bought, and I think it was in 2005, they bought Urchin to create analytics. And Urchin code is now today's Google Analytics. Back in the old days, and we actually used Urchin for our clients because you know, we've been around for two decades, <laughs> um, they didn't have multi-channel funnel reports, but they do now, which is to our benefit. All right. So once you do that, you click conversions, multi-channel funnels, and assisted conversions. Then you have another interesting report, but this doesn't tell you what you need to know. You have to do one more step on the primary dimension report before you start to see data. So do you see that this primary dimension, I just highlighted it in yellow. There is choices in here. You have to make the source medium choice. If you don't, it's going to give you these, these, these multi-channel funnel grouping buckets, and that doesn't show me BNB Finder. I have to click source medium. So once I've clicked source medium, now I do my search for BNB Finder just like I did on last click, and I find BNB Finder, and there it is. Now there are two things that you're looking for in here your assisted conversion value, of which there are none. So this particular innkeeper had $1,675 with three bookings, and they were all last click. They didn't have any people who wandered down the path and then booked from somewhere else. That There was nothing tracked. The other number is here. So when you do this report, look at both of these spots. And then in the in the um, last click or direct conversion value up top, it'll it'll tally it all together. So you will see it all listed in those numbers. But it's those two numbers that I've highlighted, the one that's missing because there wasn't any, and the one that exists, which we looked at last click. You add those together, it's added for you right above it when you look at your report. And that is your number. Okay. These are your assisted conversions. Remember, these are the people who wandered down the path. They, I like to call them wanderers, but it, they're, they, the last click is part of it, but it also includes if anybody booked from somewhere else, but wandered through whatever it was you were searching. In this case, Andy Finder. All right. Now, do I have any questions before we jump into missing data? Any questions at all? I should have done another survey to ask how many people have actually looked at both of these reports in the past, because I have a lot of people who know how to find last click, but not a lot of people who look at assisted. And sometimes there's value in assisted. Everybody's different. Tim, any questions so far? Annie? There's one. Uh, it looks like we have a question. What does this mean uh, if a referral is coming from innkeepers.bnbfinder.com slash referral? Um, and so I think that is, probably either a link either from our admin site or from, I don't think it'd be from our blog. I think it was, if it was from a blog, I think it would say blog.bnbfinder.com. Uh, so I think that's probably a click uh, while you are logged into your listing with BNB Finder and clicking out that way. I think that's what that is. Good question, thank you. All right, now. There's a, actually one more question here too. Uh, it's is BNB Finder going to let us know when we have updated to Google Analytics 4? Um, and so I don't know that that would necessarily, and maybe you can speak better to this, Lisa, but I don't know that that would necessarily impact any of our members as much as it uh, would if you, if your software company wasn't yet updated to Google Analytics 4. Because we, at BNB at BNB Finder, we use Google Analytics internally to you know make decisions on our own marketing uh, but it's not necessarily anything that we are reporting to our members so i don't know that that would directly impact you when we switch to ga4 ourselves 
and it shouldn't. It, it's mainly your website, your website, the innkeeper's website, and to book an engine, and then setting it into um, Google Analytics. And since we haven't been able to test it, I don't have the steps yet. Um, so we're, and somebody might say, oh, well, you can do it now and it, it's still okay. I, I've seen it, but I just caution people, don't do it without assistance. You really should wait till your booking engine is ready and then just roll it all together. Because it's not the outside companies that are coming in with the links, it's how you handle the inbound links. And that's why it matters on your end. And ultimately, um, the and Finder is going to have to get all their stuff organized for themselves, but it shouldn't mm -hmm. impact the innkeepers, as far as I know. That's my thought also. <laughs> we have another question, which is, does this report cover the entire path? Multi-channel fund, this gets in, this goes deep, guys. That's a deep <laughs> question. <laughs> um, all right, remember I talked about urchin and multi-channel funnel assisted reports? Up here in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you can see that the look back window is 30 days prior to conversion. That's a default. That's why sometimes your last click or direct conversion values don't match the actual last click report is because of the look back window. So you can look back as far as they provide you and it should show you the path from all of those days. Now remember, they have to be on the same device because if they jump from their, their mobile device to a computer, you lose the path. So they have to be consistent on one device. Other questions? There is one more question, and that is just, uh, does BNB Finder have the ability to see this data for each of their clients? And I can answer that one too, but the answer to that is no. Uh, we can see traffic coming into BNB Finder, but once it leaves BNB Finder and goes to your website, that would be your own Google Analytics where you would get this data from. We, we wouldn't have access to your Google Analytics unless you granted us access, so to speak. And you, as innkeepers, you can pretty much grant anybody you want access. There are companies, and we're one of them, that um, are, are Advantage Claim clients. Their access is not granted without permission so that we can make sure that their data isn't being given to somebody it shouldn't be. But you, as the owner, can say, I want so-and-so to have that information and give it to them. So um, you can share that through the admin portion of Google Analytics. All right, good, let's keep going. Now, what if you get in there and you, you're missing data? Your, your puzzle pieces are not all put together and you're like, wait, wait, Lisa showed me this, but I can't find it. So I have put down some of the most common reasons why you might be missing data. So how are you gonna identify if you have a bad Google Analytics install? Um, I had another perspective I was talking to the other day who was using a different booking engine and they had been trying for literally a year plus trying to get this all hooked up. And they hadn't even turned on their e-commerce tracking. And I'm like, what? That, that you have to do that in Google Analytics. So the booking engine was not talking to the Google Analytics, which the, they should have been, and they weren't. They didn't turn it on. And we turned it on, and we actually st started to see a change in the results. And I'm like, you just didn't even turn on e-commerce tracking. So if you don't, you're not going to have any money over there. So there's, there are some reasons why analytics won't work and you got to fix them if you want good data. Then once you've fixed even having analytics run, then there are pieces inside of analytics you do to, to clean up and to um, make your data as pristine as possible. But you got to get it running first. This is the getting it running part. So Remember, I just said e-commerce data was missing. This innkeeper I was looking at, that when we looked at his screen, see where it says conversions? And this is your reporting. If you don't see conversions and it says e-commerce conversion rate, transactions, and revenue, if you don't see these three pieces in this piece of the table, and this is under the last click report, so it's acquisition, all traffic, source, medium. If you don't see money over there showing up for a variety of places, which you can see on the left, if you don't see money showing up, it isn't installed right. E-commerce is not turned on. And if you see the word goals, G-O-A-L-S or goals tracking, 
That's the old, 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 old way that some webmasters tried to track e-commerce tracking before e-commerce tracking was released. And you may still be using some goal tracking, but you need e-commerce tracking turned on to see the money. So if you don't see the money, then your analytics isn't hooked up right. Remember the three-way picture, the website, the booking engine, and analytics are not all talking properly. So that's, that's how you can just eyeball that. If you don't see any money over there and no transactions and no conversion rates, you know something's not right and you need to get your webmaster and your booking engine to get it running. Okay, that's one piece of a broken setup. There's another one. It's a, it's a good trigger. If you look on the left-hand side and all of these places that people are sending you traffic, it, it, we're going to talk about direct in a second. But like TripAdvisor, that's a business listing. Google Organic is the left-hand side of the screen. Google GMB is the right-hand side of the screen. You will not see GMB unless your webmaster coded it for you. It has to be coded separately in your Google business profile. Um, you have to have UTM tracker code turned on to make that work. But if you happen to see your own web address in one of these source mediums or your booking engine's name in one of these results, anywhere in that list, then you know this is not set up right because you don't want to know they booked from your website. You want to exclude the website, you want to exclude the booking engine, and you want Google to go to the last previous place they were before they got to the website so you can put it in the right bucket. So if you happen to see your web address name or you see your booking engine name in that column that I have highlighted in yellow, it's still not set up right. So those are two things that I know will just cause you not to be able to see accurate data or see data at all. Now, before I get on to how do we identify um, making our data pristine? How do we get the issues with the data cleaned up? Are there questions about not seeing your own data, anything we have? No questions right now. Oh, well, right. actually, um, we do have a question from John. He's asking, could the website directing the traffic not be set up right? We're going to be talking about that in a second. And it's not so much that website, it's the, your link on that website. And we'll talk about that in a second. That's coming right up. You, 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 you're one step ahead of me. Hang on, we'll get there. Anything else, Annie? No. All right. Now, direct traffic. We're going to have another poll. Nick's going to put it up here in a second, but not yet. Direct traffic is too high. And you're, you're probably saying, Lisa, I want direct traffic. But in Google Analytics, we have to look at what direct means. So when you go into your Google Analytics Acquisitional Traffic Source Medium, this is that last click report, the first one I taught you, you look for direct slash none, and you are going to see a percentage. And that percentage is, in this case, 27%. At Acorn, if I see something over 30, I want to figure out why is direct so big? Because when it's indirect, you don't know where it came from. You just know it's in this holding bucket. You don't really know if it was DMV Finder or if it, you don't know unless everything's coded properly on each individual inbound site. So the question is, and I'm gonna have Nick bring this up, what is, what do you think direct is? When you look at that line item there, direct, what do you think it is? Do you think it's a direct booking from your booking engine on your website? Is it because your guests type in your web address directly? Is it Google's catch-all bucket for the website traffic that can't identify? Is it all of the above or none of the above? And Nick, how many answers do we have so far? Yeah, so we have about half of the people answered so far. Okay, take a guess if you don't know. Take your best guess. Okay, we got 26 out of 38. Okay, last chance. Take your guess and end. All right. So the winner is all of the above. Because a direct booking via your booking engine, one could have fallen in there from some place that they directed to your site. You don't know where they came from. They booked a direct booking. You would know that because there would be money over on the right-hand side. 
um, when a guest types in your web address directly, that's another way to that. That's where they go. It goes into the direct message because they didn't come from anywhere. They weren't on a path. They just typed it in. Um, and this is Google's catch all bucket for websites that they can't identify. And the hard part for us at ACORD is to figure out out of that 27%, how many typed it in directly and how many were like incognito. And I had no idea where they came from. Now, we know how to clean up direct for the people that haven't ever cleaned up their direct bucket. So if you're over 30%, my guess is you have this next problem. All right, I click, there we go. Oh, and I wanna give this, there's a link here. If you really wanna understand what the direct bucket is, now, um, Tom Bennett, who wrote from Moz, he is not talking about the lodging industry and we are very different than any other industry because Google has put us in the travel bucket. So we're not in the search bucket, but nonetheless, direct, it might look a little different when you read this, but it, it's still gonna say direct. And he explains what direct is. And direct isn't necessarily bad, but you wanna make sure that if something is sitting in direct, it really should be in its own bucket. You get it out of the direct bucket and you put it in its right bucket so you know where to attribute those bookings from. So all referrals need to be tracked separately. And I thought it was kind of a cute picture because you want all your BNB finder balls in one box and you want all of your TripAdvisor balls in another box. You want all your Google hotel ads in another box. And you don't want to, to take this box and dump it all into direct because now you don't know where they came from. You need to be able to separate them out. And you do that by how your inbound links work. So what is the cause of a high direct referral bucket more than 30%? It's because of HTTPS. And what has happened is inbound links have not been physically updated to HTTPS. So let me tell you a quick little historical story. So two, three years ago, maybe a little bit longer, Google said, no more HTTP. You will go to HTTPS or I will, on certain browsers, tell people you're not secure and not to go to your website. So that basically said, I'm gonna lose business. I need to get to secure. So your webmaster goes, yep, no problem. I'll get you a secure certificate. We'll get you set up. Um, and they do. And what they do is they forward HTTP to HTTPS in the background. So if somebody finds a link that still says HTTP, they click it, it forwards to the new one and voila, the website comes up. But if your webmaster wasn't us, they probably didn't tell you that your analytics is going to get messed up if you don't fix your inbound link. So uh, was it John who asked the question, what about people's Websites that are coming to you, can they impact how you track your data? And the answer is yes. So the cleanup exercise we do with all of our new clients is that we have them go through all of their inbound links. And it, it, I mean, it's an easy spot. If I can spot that I know they paid for TripAdvisor's business listing, but I don't have any TripAdvisor referrals that TripAdvisor said they sent 600 this year, I know that link is wrong because it's indirect and my direct bucket's going to be inflated with a whole bunch of TripAdvisor stuff that doesn't belong in there. So every single inbound link that you have that you want, and you really should clean them all up. You got to go log in and change them and make sure they say HTTPS. And here's a question for Tim. Tim, do you guys do any QA on when people put in their data? Do you make sure they're putting in HTTPS? Um. We haven't cleaned it up that way that, and looked at it that way. No, I think that's a great suggestion, though. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm totally aware of this problem, too. Even when, you know, like TripAdvisor switched to HTTPS, like you were saying, everybody thought, hey, TripAdvisor vanished and, you know, gone, poof, no more. It, it ended up in the direct bucket is where yeah. it was. <laughs> and so I, I very distinctly remember when all that happened. But no, we don't we don't necessarily look at our members' links that they have going from us to their websites to ensure that they are a secure link. So, and that might be something that our, our dev team automatically um, checks for. So and, but, and updates. But Nick, not everybody is HTTPS. Right. So if you try to do HTTPS and they're not it'll die because they won't have the forward. So probably 
if you can run a report, because you've only got maybe 100 people in today's webinar that were invited, that will get a copy of today's webinar. Um, you might be able just to run a database report and pull out mm -hmm. your URLs and look and see who's are not HTTPS and reach out to them and say, you really need to get to HTTPS. That's a um, great suggestion. Yeah, thank you. And then fix it in their book, it, fix them in their link for you. And then you can tell them this too, because it, as soon as they move over, their Google Analytics is all going to get skewed because all their HTTP forwards from Yelp and Bing and who knows where, you know, TripAdvisor, Google Attila, whatever. If it doesn't say HTTPS, Google doesn't know where it came from because it had it's called it had to resolve from HTTPS to or HTTP to HTTPS and it loses its it loses its where it came from and then then it dumps it in the catch-all directly. Yep. So. If you've not ever done this exercise, just jump into Google, look up your web address without any HTTP or HTTPS. Just look up, you know, my my in, I used to run an in um, here in Colorado Springs 20 years ago. It was called the Linux House. So I would go do a search, double quote, linuxhealth.com, double quote. I find every place that link is and one at a time. I go through and look at them and I go, oh, that one says HTTP. I need to fix it. And then log into whatever that system is and fix it. Same thing with your BMV finder listing. If it doesn't say HTTPS and you've upgraded, make sure you have HTTPS here. Otherwise, it's going to end up in the direct bucket and you won't know to credit BMV finder for your link or your booking. So before I jump to the bottom line, do I have any questions? <laughs> there was just a question, but I think you just kind of answered it. But it was, how do we locate all of our inbound links? How would, how would we be sure we're getting them all? Um, and so I think that's exactly what you kind of just spoke on there. Yep, yep. yep. And at the end, if somebody wants to hang out, I'm happy to show you how to do all of this. At the end of the webinar, we can turn off the recording and I'll show you how you need to do it. So what's your bottom line? And if you're an Acorn client, you've seen this before. If you're not, maybe you haven't. It's ROAS. It stands for Return on Ad Spend. And it's really a simple mathematical equation. It's simple, simple, simple. And we, all of our Advantage Plan clients, every month we do grow as for every dime they spend. I want to know if you're spending money in a place, if it's returning any bookings. That's why I have to have perfectly pristine data and make sure that everything's tracking right. Because if I have a huge direct bucket, I'm making bad decisions because I don't know where things really are coming from. So return on ad spend, it's really similar to ROI, but it's the mathematical equation. So here's the math. So ad spend, it's the money you spend to drive somebody to your website divided by the money you made. And you can use Google Analytics. Now remember, Google Analytics data doesn't track your book, doesn't track anything but your booking engine. It doesn't track phone calls and it doesn't track anything on any OTA. So you're just looking at direct bookings when you're looking at um, Google Analytics. So, and I know this number is not right, but let's just say that you paid $100 for your BNB Finder listing. And let's say you made $1,000. So what's 100 divided by 1,000? It's 10%. So that booking cost you 10%. Whatever your numbers are, you've got to do your own. Um, and like I said, we, we do this for our Advantage book plan clients every month and then meet with them and go over their numbers and go, okay, this is working, this is not working, do this here, do this there. That's why I know b and Finder is doing, it, it's on the rise, it's, it's climbing, it's, it's delivering things that it didn't before. And I chatted with Janice and I know why, so that's great. Um, but as, as you do this math on everything you spend, if that question mark is bigger than what you pay for the OTA, you might want to rethink spending the money. So if you know what you spent on your BNB Finder listing, and then you go in and you add up everything, assisted and last click, you're going to get a number. And this is very negotiable. I mean, I've got people who maybe are at 25% on a listing they love. They're not going to drop it because they love that listing. It gives them branding. It does other things for them. But it's a good starting place to get some math involved into making some basic decisions where all of the decisions have a simple number and then you can go, oh, but there's, you know, 
extraordinary situation around that one. I'm going to keep that listing because of blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. You get to make those decisions, but get your math first. So at least you have something to compare it to. Lisa, if, if I may, for one second, um, I would just reiterate one thing that you just said, because I've had this conversation a lot with folks, uh, but you, you made the comment that when you're looking at Google Analytics, it's only reflective of the revenue that is booked online through your website's booking engine. Uh, it does not account for any over the phone bookings, which you're generally entering in manually into your property management software, uh, nor will it account for any OTA bookings because those bookings all take place on those other platforms, not through your own website and your own booking engine. And so one thing I've done with clients in the past on this is you know, just kind of taking OTAs out of the picture entirely. Let's say that you look in your software and you see you know, $200,000 in revenue and you look in Google Analytics and you see $100,000 in revenue. You can make an assumption that you know, that missing $100,000 came to you over the phone. And so in that example, you can almost double the numbers that you are seeing in Google Analytics to make an assumption for what might be happening over the phone, assuming that you know as much as you're getting online, you're getting that much over the phone as well. If your booking breakdown is you know fifty percent through your website, fifty percent over the phone. Yep, exactly. And that's um, that's a little more deep than I was going to go today, but we we have that pie chart. You should have a pie chart. A piece of the pie is the OTAs, a piece of the pie is the phones, and a piece of the pie is what you're finding on Google Analytics. And that's why you want your data pristine so your Google Analytics is as clean as possible. And then you've got an idea. And, and we have our own, just like I don't want any of the direct bucket to be much bigger than 30%, I also have numbers for how much OTAs you really kind of want to aim for. And if you have a lot of phone bookings, do you want all those phone bookings or do you need to fix your website so that you can get more people to the booking engine? Or if you do want those phone bookings, I've got people who just want them to talk to us, you know, and that's fine. But you use this data to make all those decisions. And that pie chart, there's three pieces of that pie and knowing those three pieces per year really help you create your marketing plan. Good point, Kim, thank you. Um, one other question that just came up here, uh, Lisa, and this one might also be a little deeper than this, the intention of this webinar, but uh, the question is, is there a formula for the value of a bank backlink for SEO rank rather than revenue? For example, is a link or multiple links in BNB Finder more valuable than just what it drives in revenue? And if so, how much more? So basically, what's the value of the link going from BNB Finder to a property's website, I think is, you know, what's being asked here. Um, that's a hot button for me. <laughs> <laughs> because anytime somebody starts talking about links or keyword phrases, um, it gets into something that I'm just going to jump right into. We have a misinformation webinar coming up in June. You're all invited. It's free for innkeepers, aspiring and future and present innkeepers. Annie's gonna drop the link out there. This is one of the topics we're gonna talk about. When somebody says links to me, that tells me that they are still thinking old school. And links are good, I'm not saying they're not, but there is a whole new direction for lodging travel that Google instituted in 2016 and reinstituted in 2018 and then did it again in 2019. They forced everybody over to a different area of Google. And remember when I showed you the GMB listing and I said, that's the right-hand side of the screen? Not to give away the entire session, but we're seeing upwards to 70 to 80% of people's um, travelers, the, the guest experience, is coming from mobile. Mobile does not show organic traffic until after all the local traffic has been shown first. Organic is not being seen on people who are in that situation as much. I mean, if 80% is using the right-hand side of the screen, they're never seeing your website based on inbound links and SEO and titles and descriptions and all of that good stuff that we've been doing for the last 20 years. Now, if you're not tracking that, you have no idea. You don't, you don't know if you should be concentrating on one side or the other where those links fall. So backlinks are definitely old school. 
but how old school they are is going to depend on the breakdown of where your guests are coming from. And if you still have 70% of your guests digging through the wordy results on the left-hand side of the screen and not using local, then we go back and we have to talk about those links. But if most of your people are on the right-hand side of the screen using the right-hand side of the screen and the knowledge panel and travel and the four pack and all that stuff, um, not so much. So that's a long word of answer to that. And I do encourage you to come to my next webinar because I'm gonna get into that in detail because that misinformation, it, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. I can't answer your question until I look at your data. And if you aren't gathering the data properly, that data is useless to me and I still can't tell you the answer. So if you have, whoever asked that question, if you're breaking out all of your left-hand side of the screen versus the right-hand side of the screen by setting your Google profile to a UTM tracker code, we use GMB, I, it's just what we use, you can put anything in there to track it. But if you see more organic than links and um, SEO and old school SEO are still very important to your guests. But if you see mostly the right-hand side being tracked is GMB and that's 70 or 80% of your, your business, then you probably don't need to put a lot of weight on the old side. So hot button thing. And I'm- That's, that's <laughs> good question, good question. Um, there's one other question in here too, and that is uh, just Google Hotel AdWords, it, is it different than Google Ads generic as far as tracking is concerned? Absolutely. Um, let me see if I can get to Google. I left it up. And, and um, I don't know who that was, but if they are using both, I can bring them up and show them. If not... Uh, you know, it was Andrea Thornton. I need an end name. I don't have the end name and I should know it, <laughs> but I'm... Uh, Andrea, if you want to type that in here. I might find it on an about us page. There's booking.com, Thornton House in Lansing, Iowa. Do I have the right one? It's Oh, it's Leno Mansion in New Orleans. The French oh. Quarter, Leno, L-A-N-A-U-X. Okay, so um, when I said left-hand side of the screen, if you're tracking the clicks that is all these words over here, that's old. That's the old way, that's organic, that's been around for 25, 30 years. Everything on the right is the newer stuff. So the question, um, it was Andrea, right, is asking? Andrea, yep. And oh, here, just let me give you an extra Benny today. We've been tracking this since January. <clears throat> um, I've been talking, <clears throat> sorry, I was at the, the California conference, <clears throat> sorry, and I was talking to Restream, and he's like, have you seen they're putting up both options now? And I'm like, yeah, I've seen it on and off. I've seen it on mobile more than desktop. So what you, I see you're buying your Google Hotel ads. That's the top one, featured options. All options is the free one. And Google didn't used to put both of them out here. They only put the paid ones out here. Now they're putting them both. So that's something I want to think about. <laughs> Do you need to keep paying if you're not using OTAs? Because it will be there no matter what. At least now it is. Um, so in, inside of your, your uh, Google Analytics, this little green bed is going to say Google.com. Well, let me see who you're with. Lisa, we can't see your screen. Oh, you can't see my screen again. Dang it. <laughs> um, oh, this thing doesn't hold screens when I jump, does it? All right. That's not going to help me because I'm going to jump right back. So you would think. All right. So um, let me hit show my screen again. Like I said, I'm not good with Zoom. We're seeing um, you now. We're, we're okay. seeing your Google screen now. So this listing, because you're with Think. Now, if you're not with Think, it's going to have a different referral name. But with Think, it's google.com forward slash CPC. Is that right, Annie? google.com slash forward slash CPC. And if you were looking at the ads, like if you had an ad that popped up here on the left-hand side that you bought a pay-per-click ad, let me see if I can find one. Maybe there's a pay-per-click ad. There it is. 
So like La Belle Esplanade, I guess a competitor and Airbnb bought those two ads. Did they say ads? Those, if that was yours, your own name that you had purchased to be up there, if that was yours, that would be Google forward slash CPC. But the green bed is google.com forward slash CPC. And that is only for things. Um, if you're with another booking engine, they store them differently. So hopefully that answers the question. Thanks, Lisa. Anything else? I am not seeing any current questions at the moment. Well, if you enjoyed today's session and you just want to learn more about information and gathering and what's true and what's not true, we're going to do a misinformation webinar in June. We would love for you to come um, open for free to all uh, future and present innkeepers. So, and um, Nick and Tim, thank you for inviting us. Annie, thank you for your help today. Any final questions before we end? I am not seeing any, but thank you for being here. This is awesome. Um, seriously, we really appreciate this. It's I think it's such great information. And, you know, I think... I think you would agree with this, but you know, you don't find too many innkeepers who, you know, get into this business so as to acquire their PhD in digital marketing. But you know, <laughs> these days, it's almost like that's what it feels like you need to to make good decisions on your marketing. And and this, I think, really, really simplifies that. And so I think that's I think it's really very timely and just great information. Thank you so much. And if anybody needs me to show them how to look up their name so they can fix their HTTPSs, just hang out after Tim ends. And um, if Tim, you'll stay with me, we can yeah, I'll stay with you. And we'll look it up. But thanks sure. for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Really and thanks everybody for attending too. Yep, and we'll send this recording out um, on a follow-up email. So just be looking for that if you want to reference it. Um, yep. And you can also, if uh, any of your friends who perhaps didn't register or uh, wanted this information, just let us know and we can send a link to the recording as well. So. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any other current questions. I see a thanks in here. Um, and then I, I think, Annie, you probably grabbed this, but there was a comment from uh, Kathy at, at Lavender Inn there as well. About yes. Here. Yep. Yep. All right. Good stuff. All right. Great. I think uh, yeah, I give it another minute here in case there's any final questions, but I think I think we're about wrapped up here. I've got I've got Google up. So if somebody wants me to show you how to look up all of your inbound links and once you put in your web address, I will be happy to show you how. Um, Sherry from Prairie Side Inn in Michigan is asking how she can see if her uh, if her website is secure. Uh, what's the the inning again? I think it's prairiesidesuites.com, if I'm not mistaken, Sherry. Okay. So the way, the way you can tell if your site is secure is there's an HTTPS up here and the little lock symbol. symbol. So you definitely are secure, but that doesn't tell me if all of your inbound links in Google are set to be on a secure link. So let me show you an example. So if I go back to Google and I do a search for your web address, and this is how you do it, and anybody who's still with us, just type in your web address, put those quotes around it. And then we start, this is where I have to read, but there's your Facebook listing. And you see your Facebook listing, it looks like it still says HTTP. So what happens is, is though you're secure and Facebook is secure, it looks like your link on Facebook still says HTTP and there's a very good chance that's going to end up dumping in your direct bucket and not in your Facebook bucket. And then you would think Facebook isn't doing as much of a job as it is. So that's one place to find it. You can also just go to Facebook and Annie, you might have to help me with this. Um, nope, it's right there. See, it says there's no S. So if somebody clicks that, 
Facebook doesn't necessarily get the credit. It's very likely going to fall into that direct bucket. So you want to do this with every single listing. Um, let me see if I can find another Zoom insurance agency, Twitter. Um, I don't know if you have a link on Twitter, but let me look. And that's a Twitter link, and I don't know what it originally was. So I don't know if that's secure or not, but you could just put in a new one and make sure it says HTTPS. Um, and then you just start going through page at a time and looking. Uh, there's Yelp. Let's go see what you got on Yelp. And again, Yelp is still HTTP. And that's the thing. If your webmaster is just a webmaster and they're not about tracking your data and helping you with your data, they don't ever go clean this stuff up because why would they? But those of us like us who care about your data and want to make sure your data is as clean as possible, I got to clean it up. See, this says HTTP. So if you're getting any referrals from Yelp, they're probably in your direct bucket. Is that making sense? Hey, Bed and Breakfast is another directory. And that website says, uh, let me, that says HTT, no, wait, what does that say? No, nope, that says HTTP2. If you look yeah. on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, it's very bottom, it says HTTP. Now, what happens is if I click it, it'll get to HTTPS, but it goes through a, a redirect, a forward, and it, it jumps right to HTTP test, but Google Analytics doesn't know that. So, um, and I jumped off the page. Can you guys still see Hey Bed and Breakfast? We still, yep. And then there's YouTube, and it still says HTTP on your YouTube videos. So if some, if you did really care about trying to understand your data, you got to go clean your data. And your data right now, I mean, if you said, hey, Lisa, I want to have Acorn help me, that's the first thing we do. Because if I don't know where your business is coming from, I don't know where to tell you to send your money. So I got to get this right. So you want to make sure that all those links that are coming to your website, not just the fact your HTTPS, but all the inbound links that you would want to um, know if they were sending you business, you want to make sure that they're all right. And Tim, did you by chance check theirs on your your listing? Uh, I haven't. I can check it real quick though. Yeah, go ahead and check theirs. Make sure it's HTTPS. And I'm just eyeballing. And you just look through these and see, you know, anything that you would want to track, and you want to make sure they all say HTTPS. And Sherry, um, your your link on BNB Finder is a secure link, so you should be getting our data. Good. All right. Any. We had a similar request from English Meadows in about uh, just looking at their inbound, inbound links. Or I, I think in, in at English Meadows, sorry, not English Meadows in. Uh, can you bump toward? Yep. All right. So let me go to your web address. Now, again, you are secure. See, there's the HTTPS, your website's secure. But now let's go to Google and let's just do a search. And um, I usually don't look at the website because if it says HTTPS, hopefully they got it right. Um, let's look at your Facebook listing. And I don't... nope, it's not set up right. So that would mean that your data from um, Facebook may or may not be tracking properly. It probably is falling in the direct bucket because it says HTTP. Um, let's see what else we got to look at. Uh, there was a Christmas prelude page. That one actually had HTTPS. And here's another hint. Whatever your web address resolves to when you go to it, that is the exact link you want to put in there. Don't type it by hand and make a mistake. So go to your web address, grab the URL up at the top. If you happen to have UTM tracker code, just end it at the first slash. Don't put all the extra gobbledygook at the end. Save that into a notepad and just use that as you're putting everything in so that it's accurate. You don't want to hand type this stuff. You'll make a mistake. Um, ends along the coast. Let's take a look at them. And ends along the coast. And I should be able to find, well, where are you? Why did, oh, here, this one. There we go. And there's a phone number. There's that. There's a learn more. That says HTTPS. Secure. Yep. 
And there's your St. Preservations. And I don't know if there's any other links in here that you care about, but if there were, you'd wanna make sure that they're all coming to you. So if you were trying to track the ins along the coast of Maine, that was probably not stuck in the direct bus. That probably should be right in your system. Um, um. That's Lisa, we also have Deborah from MorrisHouseHotel.com asking. Morris could, House? Yeah, MorrisHouseHotel.com. So, um, so the inn at English Meadows, kind of, you got the hang of that. But that's what you want to do. Um, Morris House in Philadelphia, Annie? Yep. Oh, yep, nope, that went down. Okay, so I'll go to the web address and see this is the URL you want to copy. That's the one you want to use because sometimes they resolve to W's and sometimes they don't, but don't get them all screwed up. Just copy what's there and use that. Um, so I'm going to use this to do the search. But if I was like editing one of your listings, I'd, I'd get that right. I'd copy it right from here because I know that's where Google thinks it's supposed to go. Um, and then I'll put my quotes around it. And let's look at your Facebook listing. And I think it's not secure. Nope, not nope. secure. So the whole idea is you want good data so you can evaluate all of these things you're doing. If you're spending a lot of time on Facebook and it's all dumping in direct, you don't, you don't know if that, is, that effort is worth. What is it worth? You don't know because it's not tracking right. So, um, that's why it's so important to get all these inbound links so that you don't lose them to your direct bus. And for those of you who have a lot of Facebook or TripAdvisor links that are wrong and you see a huge direct bucket, you can pretty much be assured that's what's in it. And as soon as you fix it, direct will shrink and you'll have two new buckets or whatever that you fix. Um, Yelp, let's look at Yelp. It's not secure. And I know Yelp loves to hit people up and want get to get money out of you guys, but you can still climb your listing without paying for anything. So I'd fix Yelp. Because it'd be nice to know if somebody's looking at you from Yelp, then you know to keep an eye on your Yelp reviews at the very least. Um, I don't know what that is, Denise and somebody on a plane. Oh, here's another good one. If you do weddings, make sure that the bride and groom who are doing the wedding sites get the right url so you can track them don't just give it to them i mean hand them the url if they use this when you set up your wedding page oh wait what was that that was a philly group of inns philly now that's philly magic gardens oh but they have local bed and breakfast on it so all right let's see if i can find you and see that link doesn't have an HTTP or anything. So that one wouldn't track either, typically. That might slide under the radar because it doesn't have an HTTP to, to convert, but I'd still fix it, just fix them all. All right, Annie, anything else? We have one more from uh, Barron's Creekside uh, in Fredericksburg, Texas. your web address. Now this one's interesting, everybody. Remember I said the gobbledygook at the end? Um, Barron's is one of our clients. So they have the UPM tracker code that tells me whether they came from the right-hand side of the screen or not. See, when I click their link from over here in the website button, it has the UPM tracker code. If I click it from over here, it does not. So make sure when you're checking it that you get rid of that UTM code because you don't want all that junk on here. You're just trying to find the bare bones web address. So let's see. All right. So your Facebook page has not been updated, or at least this page. I don't know if you if you have two. Um, let me hover. Hang on. Nope. Still says HTTP. Um. You could check Instagram. You, I don't know why RevStream is out there. That's weird. TripAdvisor should be right. If you've done a TA review with us, we usually catch those when we do those. Let me see. This one is so hard to see. 
because it's so long. Um, copy the link and drop it into a notepad. If I can figure it out, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. <laughs> now, TripAdvisor basically you have to log in and make sure you've got HTTPS. And if you can't get it to hold, I found a TripAdvisor bug that they resolved for me for another client this past week. I couldn't get the HTTPS to hold, and it was a bug they fixed for us. So if you go into your uh, profile and make sure that's right, I can't tell from here. I, I just can't see. And TripAdvisor is one you have to log into. I can't tell. Um, uh, farm stays is right. I can see it right there. So your link for farm stays is correct. Um, where are you? Right there. See, that one is right. That matches your URL. So just a little cleanup on some of these is um, good if you're actually wanting to know where the bookings are coming from. So, cool. Sherry uh, asked one other question from Prairie Suites. Uh, she says, is there a list of all the places we should check? And I think when you're typing in the domain with the parentheses there, uh, or the, yeah, the parentheses, not parentheses, quotes, <laughs> that's showing you all the places that you should check, right? Yeah, because not two ends use the same stuff. I mean, like Barron's Creekside, they use hotels tonight. You may not use hotels tonight, so there's no way to give you a list. I mean, you would waste so much time going through and trying to figure out on that list which ones you don't even use. And I don't even see the link on that one. And that one is not even in English. <laughs> and that's why I can't see it. I wouldn't think Hotel Tonight would link out to a properties website. You're right. I wasn't thinking. You are correct. Because they want your money through them. Mm -hmm. That's Airbnb. Yep. 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 So, anything else that I can show anybody? Um, well, we got one more request here from Lavender Inn. Would love to have you take a look. By the sea, Santa Barbara, or somebody else? They're in Ojai, Lisa. The third one down there. Got it. Kind of like the Victorian Inn. There's there's a bunch of lavenders too. Yeah. All right, it's going. It's going. Took a while to load that. Huh. All right. So let me go back over here and grab it. Come on, Control C. And then put quotes around it. That's all your website, 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 web wow, lots of website pages. Um, I can see it right there. It your Facebook isn't updated. And that's a common one. Because when you do a post, you should be using your HTTPS, but if somebody clicks the link, that's different. Your um, Yelp is not updated. I can see that. Um, event. Detective. Let me go see what's on that. So you do weddings. Um, let's see, do they have a link for you? Uh, that one's HTTPS. So you should be able to see that in your analytics if it's set up right, because that one, that would not end up in the direct bucket. Oh, you're with Cabby. All right, so let's look at your link on Cabby. And your link on Cabby is right. So you just want to look through each of these and go, yeah, yeah, I need to fix that or I don't. Um, LA Times must have did an article on you and they got it right. So that would attract right. That's nice. But T-U-U-G-O is not set up right. That's not. And this is just a cleanup effort because once you get it all cleaned up, then going forward, you know what to do when you sign up for a new list. One, and you might agree with this, Lisa, but one thing I've seen too, uh, when I used to do this with clients, uh, we would go through and do just this. And sometimes you'll find that you've gotten, you know, press from, I don't know, US News and World Report or something like that, where they included you in an article and they included a link to your website. A lot of times, depending on when those were done, you'll find that those may not be a secure link. 
And I think you, in my experience anyway, we've had a heck of a time trying to get people to update what might be an older article with a new link. Um, and so just kind of to mention that as you're going through this, you might find you know some old press that you've gotten. And I would just say, you know, if you can get it updated, great, but you may not be able to, um, and at least in my experience. And here's a nuance. On the screen, it doesn't say HTTPS, but the link, if you look in the bottom left-hand side of the, cor of the corner of the screen, it is right. So keep in mind that what the link says and where the link goes are two different things. And as long as it goes to the right place, you don't need to change it. All right. I am not seeing any further questions or comments here. Uh, a couple of thanks and thanks to all of you again for being here. But uh, I think that may wrap us up here. Perfect. Well, I appreciate everybody's time. I'm glad you guys were able to hang out. I still have a bunch of people hanging out. So that's sweet. Um, and if you need anything, um, you can email us at help at acorn-is.com and I'm happy to give you a hand because, you know, our industry needs to stay strong and without data, I don't see how that's possible. <laughs> so, personally, totally agree. <laughs> well, I, thank you again, Lisa. I, I Really, really, I, I was telling Nick before this all started just how excited I was for this webinar because it is, uh, this is so, such relevant information. So really, thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. All right, we'll see y'all. Thanks, Lisa. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.